guys, so today I am going to be doing a highly requested video for you guys, which is also hopefully going to be very educational or maybe just entertaining, I don't know, who knows. Today I am going to tell you guys my top tips if you are traveling to Iceland. If you are new here, then hi, my name is Hrapna and I am from Iceland and I am just here to educate and have fun. <laughs> so before I start out this video, I really want to tell you guys about this book right here. This book was sent to me by the author himself. However, all of my thoughts and opinion are my own. So. Let's talk about this book. So this book is called Message from the Middle of Nowhere and it is by Gunnar Andre. And it says on the front that it is an Icelandic Viking philosophy for conquering the challenges of business and life. And I feel like that summons up this book a lot. And yes, I have actually read this book and I really liked it. If you didn't know, I am studying literature and this is different from anything that I've ever read before, which says a lot because I read a lot of books. <laughs> I would describe this book as a coming of age self-help business book. So the reason I am talking to you guys about this book is because it is obviously by an Icelandic author. So it features so many stories in Iceland and about Iceland. And there are so many things in this book that you cannot find on Google. Gunnar Andre goes into so much detail about Iceland, Icelandic culture, things that you really don't know about Iceland if you aren't from Iceland. Like a lot of this I can really relate to. So if you are interested in Iceland, I would highly, highly recommend this book. It is so educational, but very fun. You're basically just reading stories about Gunnar's life and you, you learn so many new things, especially about Iceland and Icelandic culture. And obviously about um, how he became a salesman. Also, it is so easy to read. The letters are really big and the chapters aren't very long and it is filled with uh, drawings that are just so fun. So yeah, I highly recommend this book if you're interested in Iceland and you want to know more because there are just things in here that I could never tell you guys about because obviously I don't have as much life experience than uh, the the author of this book, Gunnar Andre. On one of the first pages you have uh, a map of Iceland and all of the locations that Gunnar talks about in the book. So if you are interested in buying this book, I will leave the Amazon link down below so you can purchase this book. So obviously I am talking about tips and tricks for when you're traveling to Iceland and my tip number one is obviously to buy this book and read it before you come here because you learn so much and you get so inspired uh, to visit the places from this book. So that is my tip number one. Okay, so the next tip is something that I hope and pray that everyone knows before coming to Iceland. And that is never, ever, ever, ever buy water from the store here in Iceland. In Iceland, we always, always drink tap water. It is 100% clean and delicious. So please do not ever buy <laughs> plastic bottled water. It is number one. It's not environmentally friendly. That's looks like a lot of plastic that it's just going to waste and it is essentially just buying a plastic bottle that has been filled with tap water. I always carry around this plastic bottle. I have had this for a very long time and people always assume that I buy buy water from the store. Um, nope, this is just my, my water bottle. I just think it's very comfortable to uh, drink from this. That is why if you ever see me drinking from this plastic bottle, it's, it's the same bottle that I refill constantly. So don't you guys worry. While we are talking about the water in Iceland, uh, water in Iceland is just very, very cheap. So you don't have to worry about taking long hot showers. So yeah, just yeah. I know a lot of hotels have like a, a sticker on their showers that says don't take long hot showers or something but yeah you don't have to worry about that in Iceland. The next tip is to travel somewhere else than in Reykjavik. Don't just come here and stay in Reykjavik the whole entire time. I would not recommend that at all. I love Reykjavik. It's a beautiful city. However, our countrysides are even more beautiful. So don't get stuck in Reykjavik 
try to look at the countryside. I feel like so many people uh, book hotels, not just in Iceland, just in general. I personally never go downtown Reykjavik because it's just filled with tourists anyway. So, <laughs> so basically my tip is that if you're booking a hotel or somewhere to stay, I seriously can't recommend enough to check out uh, summer houses or like summer cabins in Iceland that are located in maybe Selfoss or Kveragerde or Kvonsvöllur, Hetla, like there's so many beautiful places that have a lot of summer cabins and a lot of Icelandic people own like cabins in the countryside and they rent them out for tourists and yeah it's a win-win situation you can probably just google Icelandic cabin rent or rent summer cabin Iceland something so yeah just I, I would check that out if I find like really nice summer cabins or summer houses for you guys then I will link them down below if you're having trouble. My next tip is to rent a car if you are staying in Iceland. I know a lot of people rent cars when they come here. I have two main reasons for this. Uh, number one is that taxis and bus fares are so expensive in Iceland so it's probably less expensive to just rent a car. And number two is that if you rent a car you have more freedom to go explore and see all of the beautiful nature and landscape and etc. However, <laughs> just make sure that you have enough money for gas because gas is ridiculously expensive in Iceland just like most things here. <laughs> My next tip is to check out the weather forecast before coming here. I have said this once, I will say it again. Icelandic weather is unpredictable and it's constantly changing. If you're coming here in December then you obviously need to bring like very warm clothes. Just make sure to check the weather forecast beforehand because sometimes people come here in April and don't realize that <laughs> sometimes we still have snow in April. So <laughs> be aware of that the weather can change a lot while you're here. It rains a lot in Iceland so I would always prepare for rain so you can check out the weather forecast by just googling Iceland weather right now or Iceland weather this week. It's, it's that simple. The next tip is that you don't really have to take out cash before uh, buying something here because most places in Iceland do accept uh, I think all kinds of credit cards and debit cards so uh, I know a lot of people come here and try to shop uh, or try to buy something with euros or dollars or pounds. Um, there are some places in Reykjavik that actually accept uh, euros I think but yeah most places just uh, take cards, just regular cards and uh, obviously the Icelandic Corona. The next tip is to go hiking. Oh my god, I cannot stretch this enough. I personally love hiking. Uh, if you have been following me for a while and if you're following me on Instagram then you would know this but I absolutely love hiking. We have so many awesome places to hike. My favorite places are Esjan. I have done a whole video about hiking at Esjan and also uh, Helgafell. Both of these mountains are located near Reykjavik so it's not really hard to get there. Also especially Helgafell does not have a lot of tourists at all. So if you want to get away from all of the busy crowds then go hike. Go on a hike. Yeah. If you ever go there then please send me a photo on Instagram because I love when I tell you guys about an activity and you, you actually do the activity that I'm telling you guys about and send me pictures. I don't know, it just makes me really happy that you guys are actually taking my advices. The next tip is to do your research before coming here. For an example, I got a DM on Instagram the other day and there was this guy who's coming to Iceland and he is going to camp around Iceland for two weeks and he was asking me if it was legal to camp here. I of course responded and told him yes it is legal but we have camping sites um, so you have to make sure that you are camping at a legal camping site. You cannot camp just anywhere in the nature you have to be using a camping site and you always have to pay to camp here so yeah. 
but you get like free toiletries and stuff. So if you have doubts about things like yeah camping for an example, always just google beforehand, just make sure that you are informed and ready for your trip. The next tip is to check out the Icelandic traffic signs before coming here, especially if you are renting a car. Okay, so <laughs> the thing about this, I have experienced so many bad drivers and I have talked about this before I talked about this in my vlog with Same that I absolutely despise bad drivers. What I have found out is that we have a lot of tourists here in Iceland that are renting cars and obviously they have different rules in their countries and they are just not informed about our rules. So when I am getting pissed off about someone doing something that they shouldn't be doing, it is very often just a tourist that doesn't know any better. I always thought that traffic signs and, and uh, rules in traffic were international like wouldn't it make sense that everyone had the same rules so there wouldn't be a misunderstanding and while we are talking about icelandic streets and roads we have a lot of bad roads be very careful when you're driving in the countryside because we have a lot of bumps and stuff in our roads which can be dangerous and yeah and we have a lot of road work especially in the capital area so yeah we our road system is messed up <laughs> this wasn't on my list but i really want to talk about this if you are driving and you see beautiful landscape or if you see the northern lights do not stop in the middle of the road it's so freaking dangerous to stop in the middle of the road i know a lot of tourists tend to stop to take pictures it's very dangerous so don't do that so the last thing is something that i got on instagram so there was this couple who were coming here and they had booked a hotel which had a lot of icelandic letters in the name <laughs> of the hotel so they were worried that they couldn't put the location on google maps what you can do is that you can switch out the icelandic letters for english letters so instead of the icelandic o you could put just the normal O and instead of the Icelandic AF you can put the D thought will become TH so yeah you can always change and Google Maps will still like be able to understand we are talking about Google Maps uh, Google Maps is your savior when you're traveling in Iceland okay so that is going to be it for today's video I really hope that you enjoyed and I really hope that I helped you if you are on your way to Iceland, then um, let me know if this video was helpful. Also, don't forget to check out A Message from the Middle of Nowhere by Gunnar Andre. Again, I will link this book down below. Um, highly recommend. So, yes. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.